Hey, welcome to a new Project Cam video. In case you're new to the channel, we bought this big piece of land three years ago, trying to figure out how we as humans can live more sustainable, whatever that means. So we're gonna try it out, document it here, so you can really follow it from the early beginning until the end. So in the first year, we set up our base camp, which has all the basic utilities to live here, like water, electricity, a kitchen. And in the second year, we invited a lot of people to come and help out and also test our systems. And now in the third year, we really started to develop our foundations to make sure they expand and are really solid for the future. So we had a lot of people helping, chopping, clearing bushes, digging, building things. Many projects finished and done. And let me show you all what we did this year in the Project Camp Season 3 recap video. Enjoy! First of all, we needed a new car. And if you followed our project for long enough, you probably remember our old blue car. It was Rita's old friend and she donated it to the project. Really helpful, but it was becoming too small for our needs. And it was also slowly falling apart. You just can't move this chair. There's a hole here. We needed a big robust car, but easy to repair. So we bought this 1992 second hand pickup truck. Many people around have this one and the motor was in good condition. But still, it needed some maintenance. Little things. So we called our friend and neighbor Hans, who has been a mechanic for many years. First we changed the oil and filters, then we took out the box. He was definitely asking for some love. Many people worked on this together. It was a good way to start and get to know each other. We also reproduced the wooden structure that holds the box. And to protect the wood, we coated it with the used oil from the engine. Afterwards, we went to this local guy to get some parts that were broken. Isto, 50. 50? Sí. Whoa. Luckily, we found most of the parts we needed. It's cool how you can bring things back to life with a bit of effort. It just needs a good cleaning, greasing and good to go. Yeah, I like new! It was super fun to do all these fixes. Yep. We have to go. With the box back we took care of the rust, the wood and you can clearly see the difference, fresh and new. Well, I'm, oh, you know, I'm satisfied with all the things we've done. Because now everything is repaired what was broken. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. With the mechanics done, we just had to fix the interior. We were lucky to count on Kevin. He did a nice job fetching all these small wooden pieces for the fence. Up and down, left and right. And we're using old jeans to fix the holes in the dashboard. It's fun to use these unusual materials in a car. Now it looks perfect. There was only just one final tweak upgrading to off-road tires. The new pickup drives smoothly and should last many more years. Fits perfect to our setting, because now we can transport large materials and up to six people. Awesome. Speaking about vehicles, let me talk about this old German post van. It belonged to Mattia and it was his little house for many years. But the van stopped working so he left it here. It's been a very useful dry space. But after two years outdoor without moving under the rain and sun, it was in a pretty poor state. The roof was leaking, some parts rotting and we could make better use of the space inside. So Mariona, Jaime and Kevin jumped in to transform it into a cozy living space. First we leveled it with these wooden blocks. It's not gonna move anymore and over time it got sunken in the soil and the tires lost pressure. So once it was balanced, we took out the interior. It's nice to see different people with different approaches. You can tell the difference between Jaime and Kevin. And you always need someone balanced in the middle, like Mariona. With the interior as an empty canvas, we figured out the layout, but realized we will need to change the roof. 
It was very weak, breaking, leaking, it made a fiberglass. So we took it out for a full replacement. So now we're ready to start building. It worked. It's yeah. done. Better than we thought. Yeah, I like the new roof. Much more open, sunlight. <laughs> yeah. First the frame inside. Cork panels for the insulation. And one of the best materials we found this season, the floorboards from a gym close by, where they used to play basketball on. Made from very durable white oak. There were literally tons of planks ready to be reused. Only downside? There's a lot of trays, a lot of dirt. So the first step we need to reuse it is to sand it and clean it. We had to do a lot of sanding, a lot. We covered the roof with them. top of that cork and we decided to try some plain metal sheets to give it a long lasting finish. Ok waterproof, next we covered the interior with some more basketball planks, both floor and walls. Then we installed electricity, ok, it works built the bed and a little office. Starting to look nice. We built a small sink with some nice wooden boards and sanded and oiled the whole interior. I have the best sander in camp. Mariana. Hello. Then we took the opportunity again to upcycle some old pants and shirts. This is for the fall of sleep. And some other cool stuff. And to finish we added some stairs to enter the house. The end result is pretty cool. All that wood finishing looks super cozy, lots of details, well insulated, the bed is awesome and the little office in front became one of the best places in base camp to have some focus work or a video call. Feels really good to reuse all this wood and materials plus saving this old German van from the scrapyard. And it's a very good place to sleep with no problems when it rains. But actually not everyone has the luxury to sleep in a van. Most of the people here come with tents. Now the weather here is pretty good. But it can be annoying to stay long in a camping tent, especially if it's too cold or when it's pouring rain. And we wanted a small durable tent where you can actually stand in. But surprisingly we didn't find something out there. So we started to make our own tent that would fit our needs. Ok just to give you some context, this is the map of our land. Base camp is here, the renovated yellow van is here and for our new tent we set it out here next to the creek. To try another sleeping area, more chill and more quiet than in base camp. Emily, who is a skilled woodworker, seemed to like the idea of working in such a peaceful place. The platform was made of wooden red cedar boards without any coating, just to test and see what it does. Meanwhile we asked some friends to make our first prototype tent, Kai and Eva. They were on a clamping site in the mountains and they have experience building tents. Eva made a canvas with cotton fabric and Kai made the frame with wood. Wow. 
Once we had the platform and tent ready, we put it all together. As a prototype, it seems like a good starting point. It checks all our boxes and the location is pretty nice and cozy. We will continue improving the design in the future because after some use we already find some flaws. Now we go back to the base camp because we needed to solve another problem. Storage. At that moment we were running out of space. We had this white tent to store our things but it literally was falling apart. If we wanted to bring more people here we also needed to store more stuff like food, materials and our two containers were already full. So we brought another old container to the land. What a beauty, eh? Huh? What a beauty, yes. We decided to build a big metal roof on top to create a large dry area around the container. But everything around it is still very dense and overgrown so with some mimosa trees, some old branches that are there. So we cleared it. So we have these six meter long beams and they go all the way back to the container but they don't fully fit in so if you have to drill a hole in the middle uh, yeah it doesn't fit but in order to make it fit is we could make a hole in the container so the beam can slide all the way through right there and for the frame it meant quite a lot of drilling Welding, cutting, painting, and assembling. And for the roof itself, we went for corrugated metal sheets, because it seems to be the standard local way. I wanted to give it a try. The assembling went very smooth, because it's a very simple and effective design. Good chips. You can actually download the drawings in case you want to replicate it. Link below. So we kept working in the surrounding area to make it nice. And we brought electricity to the container. And we built a modular shelf system to hang and organize things outside of the container. Again, a lot of metal work and mounting. With the metal work done, we had one challenge before mounting them on the container. Yeah. Uh, the container is not perfectly straight, so we need to hit uh, some of the pumps back. So it's a uh, hammer time. Now it's somewhat flatter, it's pretty hard to do actually, but now we can mount the shelf in the container. Only thing left to do is to bring all the wood here. And with the material bank on one side, we went for the same process on the other side. Here we would store all our waste. Are you dry? So now we have a dry space to store our materials and waste. For the waste system itself, we asked Kevin, he's really into this stuff. To give you an idea, he collected, cleaned and sorted all our packaging during months. We need more mindsets like this. 
And he came out with the first setup to make separation easier, much better than we used before. So this is our first version of the recycling system. Uh, all the pins are ready. Now with the outside ready, we went to the inside. We first needed to clean it. And give it a paint job. And then separated the space in two. The back part will be our food storage and workspace supplies, so we needed to build some shelves. Put some light and build more shelves. So the back storage is ready and the front part was set to store our landscape tools. So we also made some nice hangers to organize them properly. Together with Robert, they made a big solid table to repair and maintain the tools. Just needed some final details to finish the job. The device is on the table, the tools are on the wall. Everything is ready. So now we have a proper storage. It's nice to have a big dry space where we can store all materials, bulk food, waste, tools. A very boring but useful upgrade. It's good to have a useful dedicated space for these tools, especially because we know we have much more landscaping work to come up in the future. Because they're essential when we want to regenerate our land. Especially because we have quite a big challenge here, and that is wildfires. If you follow our channel, you probably know that we live in an area that fully burned down a few years ago. And after that, our land got covered with these fast-growing invasive mimosa trees. Which is cool in the short run, but the downside is they are very likely to burn again. We prefer native trees, like cork and oaks, because they belong to the local ecosystem and are more fire resilient. But they have quite a difficult time to thrive along these fast-growing mimosa. So if we want to protect ourselves from fires, we need to start to chop down mimosa. Here you can see a big patch between base camp and office. They are quite close to the building and both our own logic and fire regulations told us to prioritize to remove them. So let's start. We wanted to try two different methods for removing them. First we tried to debark the trees. We were told that this method is very effective because they slowly die and will dry up. And otherwise if you cut it, it sprouts back fast. But in this way they don't. So it's a longer process, but eventually better in the long term. And it was also quite pleasant to hear all these mimosa sound effects. It looks cool, let's see how it actually behaves over time. So we tried the debarking approach on this half of the patch, and on the other half we went for the classic way. Chopping. But first we had to clean the area a bit. Chopping spiky bushes, piling that wood, more spiky bushes, more that wood removing old barbed wire and protecting the baby native trees. Okay, now we're ready.
we ended up with a lot of wood, so we called a guy with a wood chipper to help us turn wood into a nice cover to put on the ground. They will be used to make pots and protect the soil. The rest we offer to our neighbors to pick up. It was a good show to see their machines in action. Now we have a safer office, an ongoing debarking experiment and a much better view of the land. It's quite a visual change actually. Okay, back to the map. So the storage container is there and the area we just cleared is right there. Another fire risk concern is our road access on the land. In the case of a forest fire, it can get dangerous if all the side vegetation starts burning around our escape route. So we cleared all the mimosa and brambles. But we kept the native trees and some fruit trees we planted last year. This was actually a ton of work, but this is a recap video, so sit back, relax and enjoy the time lapses. And again, our neighbors came to pick up some wood. We had a lot. The space is fully open now and only the natives remain, um, which is very cool for them to thrive. And also much safer for us. Now we do a lot of clearing on the land, but it's not only for fire risk. Sometimes we also want to chill, so we want to create a nice space where we can do that, which is the lagoon. So last year we found this fully overgrown waterfall. We cleared the area around it and started using it. Later we also discovered another lagoon on top. It was a bit dry and had broken door, so we fixed it up. Close it for the winter and we noticed there's actually a lot of water flowing here. Awesome. So knowing its potential, this year we wanted to dig the lagoon further so we can store more water. Because when it gets hot in summer it's really nice to have a place to chill and refresh. And also nice for the ecosystem because things around it don't dry out. So we want to make this a pleasant place. We started by draining out the lagoon so we could see what was on the bottom. Then we removed the overgrown brambles around the edges. It's very complicated to access this place. And there's a ditch that we have to cross. So we use this old burnt chestnut tree to build a tiny bridge. And then we could walk there with our tools and start digging out the soil. It would be way faster to do this with big machinery, but there's just no way to access it. So it was a massive amount of work, all by hand. We built some steps to access the place. They're pretty sturdy. Some terraces to enjoy the sun. Planted some grass.
wash the rocks and finally we close the gate. Our neighbor Tanekas came to see the place. He appreciates our work and loves to see us giving it use. And we love to see him happy. We also found some nice animals when cleaning the lagoon. It's really satisfying to see how it was before and now. And everyone can enjoy the lagoon. It was really useful to have this last year when working in the heat. Because in this area in Portugal, temperatures get around 50 degrees Celsius in summer. So as the hot summer approached, we went to clear this area next to the big rocks on top of our land. Because it was fully overgrown with spiky bushes and tiny mimosas and close to an eucalyptus farm, which are very flammable. But this is also the place where we have the most native trees on the land and we want to see them thrive. So we put some serious effort in maintaining this area. We removed the 10 spiky yeah. bushes. Took out dead wood from the new trees. And put in piles to retain water. Brush cut, chop more spiky bushes, more dead wood. Okay, you get the idea. We work mostly in the morning because the rest of the day. <laughs> Sun has come out. <laughs> and in the end, we had new pots, a bug hotel, tree signs. I freed up a lot of trees. It was a big operation five weeks and eight people. You might not see this, but it's probably the biggest area we cleared in one action. So here we are now in the middle of the video, roughly, taking a little break, enjoying the view. Uh, and actually also a nice link to a funny story, which is about the middle of our land. So we have to go back a few years when we bought this big piece of land here. Uh, we bought the whole thing, except for one circle in the middle. Uh, that was from someone else, so we couldn't buy it, which felt a bit risky to buy a land and someone else owning that thing because they could end up building a chicken farm there or, I don't know, do something very weird in the middle of our own project. But for some reason we thought it will be okay, maybe risky, but it will find its way. And uh, luckily that was the case, the neighbors were very nice. And, and now three years later, we finally bought that piece of land, which is really cool. It's really the heart of Project Camp. So the first thing we did when we got it is uh, we started exploring it to see what is actually there. So here's the border. So we're gonna have a look what's there. So some people call this real life Minecraft. Uh, and accessing was actually not easy. So we need to work on that. But we managed to walk around and explore. Wow. Lots of spiky bushes. And after some brush cutting, we revealed this awesome terrace. This also revealed some other abandoned ruins. Cool old ruin. Another sort of ruin. They could 
be nice houses to renovate and live in the future. We found some big rocks. So here's a big rock, and there you can see the big rock from our land. It's cool. And here's our big grass patch. And this water reservoir. This land has a lot of potential. And at this point we are ready to build our first house in this new area. And as we like to reuse and recycle, we decided to build it on top of an old truck trailer. We started touring scrapyards where we found many different trucks types, sizes and forms. A lot of stuff. It helps having something movable, it's less paperwork and you can change its position when it's needed. So at the end of the day, after seeing many cool trailers, we needed to decide which one to buy. And we couldn't choose, so we asked our patrons to vote on the five candidates. Blue box, classic trailer, fridge box, shipping container and pig trailer. And the winner was... Pig trailer, we're currently here uh, to actually buy it. And once we bought it, we still had to do one thing. The trailer needed to go to the middle land, but there was no proper access for such a vehicle. It's completely overgrown with mimosa, so we had to open up a road. First chopping. And carrying logs away. And then taking the stumps out with the digger. And after that, we could finally move the pig trailer here. With our new road. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. How did it go? Smooth. Very smooth. Time to take a closer look at it. So here we have the beautiful inside. It was in a very rough condition. Lots of rust. The tarp, not very promising, the floor, but at least the structure seemed solid enough. So we started by cleaning and removing stuff. Now it's time to get rid of the old, to make room for the new. Then we repainted the whole frame and fixed some bits on the floor. We built a top quality movable work table and brought it to the pig trailer with some tools so we can start work there. With all that ready, we now only needed some time to think about how to actually build the house. So talking about building a house, at this point we still had two rooms in the bottom of our sketchy ruin to be renovated. This one is nice and cool for summer, with big stone walls. But it needed a lot of work. So for some weeks we had Ruben here to help out. We started by emptying the room and removing the rubble from the floor. Then we build a wooden floor and we used again those awesome basketball court planks. Started a wooden frame around the original brick wall. A very tiny wooden door. It had to fit the original structure. Fits like a glove. We wired the electronics, insulated the wall with cork sheets and covered them with wood boards. So, 
that was the last piece. The room is done now. All the sidings are up. The floor is nice in. And uh, yeah, that's it. And now we have a very cozy room. Not sure yet what the purpose will be in the long term, but for now it's nice to have another premium insulated space where you can rest, exercise, talk with the family or do some other focused work. Being more people on the land, our facilities got short faster than expected. This also applied to the toilet. Okay, so a quick recap. At the beginning we pooped in the holes in the ground. After that we built a compost toilet and we made a big hole a bit away to dump our manure. But throughout time we started having too much poop to bury and last year we started having some traffic in peak hours. So we decided to build a new toilet. Mariona made a design and we started to make room for it. We leveled the place. Bought the wood. Sanded. it. And oiled it. We started building the thing. Install the window, the door, cover the walls. And then we built the toilet box. Install some lights. toilet paper holder and build a table for a sink outside. And voila, a new improved toilet. The toilet has a compartment for toilet paper and period items and a toilet seat for precious plastic. And another compartment for sawdust that is automatically filled from the outside. But we're not finished yet because this guy wanted to do some more upcycling. We wanted to make an experimental roof with shingles made out of aluminum cans. So we collected around 500 drinking cans from our waste and local cafes. A lot of drinks. Everyone helped making the sheets. Should drink a beer. And finally built the thing. Roof is finally done. Yay! So that's the roof. This is a completely new kind of roof design, an experiment to try and find more recycled materials to work with. It's awesome, we're quite happy with the result. I'm curious to see how long it will last. Now with the new toilet running, we also needed to improve our poop management. So Alu thought of a composting system made of pellet boxes. We got some hay and buckets and some campers got busy making 14 lids for the buckets. Let's see if they fit. They fit! <laughs> Once a week we emptied the buckets in a pallet box. Yummy! And cover them with hay. It works quite well. Poopales. And we got quite a lot of hay from our neighbor George. After we harvested the grass from our fields. It's a win-win. We get our land maintained and he gets hay for his cows. Oh, 
we quite often get help from our neighbors and they often ask us for help. Both sides feel it's a good deal. It's nice to have this relationship with people around us. And many of them lived or worked on this land in the past and they like to see us recovering the place. And although some of them are getting pretty old, they still grow their own crops, which at this point they master. And this year we were invited to help harvest corn, potatoes, grapes. It's hard work, but actually quite fun to do. And after the work is done, we celebrate with a classic Portuguese snack. And we also got some extra veggies to take home. This is all the things we take back. Okay, time to go back to camp. After lots of thinking and designing, we were ready to start building the trailer house. We had a solid metal structure, but we had to figure out how to build the walls on it. So we started by making a wooden structure. This is to support the walls. Then we added a vapor barrier to keep the moisture out. Inside we build a wooden frame. And roll the waterproof foil on top. We have to use this because we're going to try a new kind of insulation material that needs to stay very dry. We assembled the rafters on the roof got some stairs I don't know if you know this Robert but it's a bit too high. Bought old windows went to get more basketball planks. Did I always mention we really like these? And we will cover the roof with it. The inside was then protected. You could start to have an idea of what it would look like. For the floor, we used some second-hand insulation and plywood we found on the scrapyard. And we covered it with, guess what, yep, basketball floor. Yeah! And finally, for the wall insulation, we used this new type of material, made from old textile waste. We wanted to give this a try to see how it behaves but it needs to stay really dry to avoid rotting. We did the electric wiring and then we unfolded our waterproof protector. We still needed to cover the outside walls and we found another good deal at the scrapyard. Well, not sure if it's what a good deal, but it was a large stack of very durable laminated panels. A good quality, but terrible colors. And we couldn't figure out how to match them. So again, we asked our patrons to vote on the best looking design. What could go wrong, right? Fun. Oh, it's not my choice. Huh? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's be clear about that. It's like some kid took too much sugar or something. <laughs> 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 I mean, it looks funny. And after creating this big box of post-its, it was time to finish the roof. We also insulated it with textile. Good stuff and place the vapor barrier. And 
finished it with corrugated metal roof on top. Yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, this shot got a bit shaky, but I guess it shows the process. And for the side finishing, Colleen and Julien went for this French technique. It looks nice. Yeah, not perfect. Cool. And after that, the only thing left was the interior. More basketball planks for the walls, why not? Then we divided the space in two. Julien and Colleen made a wooden mosaic with the offcuts from this project. So, all the mosaic is done. And I got hooked into using trash as well and made a heat wall from the stove with granite offcuts. Hello. We installed the chimney, added the stove, and now we have heat. We also got some recycled sockets and light switches made by fresh plastic. Let's see if it works. And after doing some final finishing, it was done. So much love and attention to detail was put in this project. It's really good to see everything coming together. And now we finally have our first proper house. We only have to bring some furniture and it will be a very cozy living space. At that point we were getting to the last month of the season and rain time was approaching. A big part of our project has to do with regenerating the land. In season 1 we found this lake or swamp next to base camp and cleared it up. But we kind of left it there waiting for a plan. Now we thought about it, how it could retain more water. And we decided to clean it, make it a bit deeper and fix all the eroding edges. Yes, time for earthworks. First we needed to empty it. Luckily we got some help from our neighbor Antonio and his old water pump. And then the digger came. But first we jumped in to save some frogs and salamanders. We have like 10 of these. And where's the frog? We have frogs but they are a bit shy. Then the digger smoothed out the steep edge. We made an overflow trench, just in case we get too much water. See what you're thinking, that could have been done with a digger, a bit faster. I agree. Alright, so the overflow ready. And also spread some crops for the grass to grow here. So here we have the lake, swamp, lagoon, let me know how I should call this. Um, but we cleared it up and now it's much deeper, so we can hold much more water, which is cool. And the job was done. It looks much better with these soft slopes. Can't wait to see what it looks like when the grass grows and the water fills up. Now talking about water retention, it's time to do our last project of the season. In the area we chopped next to the office. We wanted to use the slope to retain more water and plant some fruit trees. As an investment for food and shade in the future. First we had to take out all the stumps we left there from before. So the digger came again. It's incredible the power of these machines compared to hand labor.
With all the roots out, we asked the digger to make the slope less steep, so rainwater runs slower from base camp to the field. And we took the opportunity to dig a trench with cables and water pipes to the office. At this point the season was over and people started leaving. Quite sad to see them go and at the same time relieved thinking of the coming winter holidays. We needed some rest after a long and intense year. But also still had to wrap it up first and dig some swills and plant the fruit trees. We made an attempt by hand but we decided to call another digger. This time a small one and the job went pretty smooth. And finally we didn't have enough energy anymore so we called some friends and neighbors around to help us plant the trees. now it's finished and I can show you what it looks like from above. So this is the main area of project camp. Most of the stuff we do happens here. You can see base camp, the new living area, our future community center, the office and the new fruit tree slope. We made it in a way that it will retain the rainwater so it can slowly be absorbed by the fruit trees. Now we just have to wait for the rain and that's it. All right so that was it all the things we did this year. But actually, these were only just the big interesting things we did and made it into the recap. We also have a bunch of smaller things that we did. Built version one of our biogas system. We paired our white tent with an old truck tarp. Baked our own bread all year around. Made a bird lock for Mimosa for the toilet. Did a research on mapping out our suppliers and our carbon emissions. Brought a boating table to the office. And updated our website with some statistics. Yeah, we did quite a lot of stuff, especially looking back in this recap. Uh, and it still feels like it's really the early stages of this big long-term project because our goal is to regenerate this piece of land, figure out how to live more sustainable and also share all this documentation with you guys. So still a lot of projects and a lot of people to come and you can follow us every week to see how it's gonna go. Actually, if you already wanna see the next video, make sure to support us on Patreon because next week we're gonna show all the things we're gonna do this season. So it's quite cool. Um, and in general, thanks for all of you guys watching these videos. It really helps a lot. And special thanks for the ones supporting on Patreon to go the extra mile and really financially support the project. Really cool. And also a big, big thanks for all the people that actually came here to help and get their hands dirty to uh, develop this project. Here's a little clip to all remember their beautiful faces and uh, see what they did. Thank you and see you in season four.